In the dead, vast middle of the night, when most of us are lost to pleasant dreams, one man comes alive. The composition he's playing is Bach's Toccata in D minor. And there's a reason for that. Look around the room for clues. There's a sea captain's hat and an odd but strangely familiar ship. No, it's not Captain Nemo at the helm, but it is a modern-day version of that diabolically clever scientist musician Jules Verne gave us in his story, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. He's the chief idea wizard for the Atari Corporation by day, and by night, he's a musician. Meet Alan Kay, biologist, world-class computer scientist, inventor, dreamer, you name it. Since Kay was a child dreaming of becoming Captain Nemo, he has set his sights on what could be rather than on what is. He did some unusual things as a boy, such as appearing on the Mickey Mouse Club and becoming a quiz kid on national television's game show. After all, he learned to read at the age of two and a half. Fantasies, especially the Disney film Fantasia, had a major impact on him because they wove together many of the ideas he was interested in. Fantasia was one of these grand syntheses of technique and art and emotion and all of these things. And especially at that age, it really knocked me over. Uh, I'll never forget, I don't think anybody will ever forget the first time they see the Mount on Bald Mountains sequence and the wings open up and everything else. Oh man, is that something. And so that had a, that had a big effect because I always thought of technology's end was to be able to do things like that. And it was many years later when the when I realized that the computer, uh, one of its destinies might be to allow people to do fantasias of their own. You play uh, video games, Ollie? Alan Kay is a knowledge junkie like who dabbles in a little bit of everything while fueling Atari with his brilliant ideas. He's hard to get a hold of. He's either in a very heavy science mode or music mode. When we caught up with him, he was pondering the computers of the future on his way to work, from his home in Brentwood, California, to Atari headquarters in Sunnyvale. I think the major metaphor for communication in the late 80s and the 90s will not be windows at all, but what we call agents which are alter egos, sort of extensions of yourself, part slave, part servant, part coach, part guide, um, artificially intelligent but not like a human, uh, essentially a last of the Mohicans to guide you around the information wilderness of the, of the future. And that's the kind of thing that we're working on at Atari. What does it mean to have an assistant that is extremely capable but not intelligent like a human? Kay came to Atari, he says, to put intelligence everywhere, and Atari at once gave him a mission to dream and to take risks. He feels people have a basic need for fantasy, and at 43, Kay still loves it. We use fantasy whenever we go to a simpler world in order to do business. So not just video games and television are fantasy, but scientists use mathematics and computers to do things in a simpler way. Musicians, theater, all of those are elements of fantasy in our lives. We can't be human without fantasizing. Kay's computer wizardry has given the industry such things as overlapping windows, magical bits of software that allow you to put more information on the screen at one time. One of the things that you would like to do is to magnify the effective area of the display, and the way you do that is by making lots of little displays out of the display itself. Okay, so that's what a window is. Each window is a completely separate display that is the back end of a telescope communicating into the, into the simulation that's running there. Alan Kay is forever on the go, and up here in Silicon Valley, there are many top-notch computer scientists that Alan visits to share his latest ideas. At Stanford University, Professor Doug Lynette shared his thoughts with us. Alan is very often um, intentionally provocative, intentionally challenging. Sometimes he doesn't even believe what he says, I think. Um, he just says it to, to challenge you, to, to give you an idea. Um, and in many cases, I think he, he even operates under the, um, the mode where he, he says something without even understanding what he means by it. And in this, and in, but you figure, well, it's Alan Kay. He must mean something tremendous by it. And the struggle that you go through to figure out what he must have meant um, gets you a good idea that neither of you had um, when he said the original remark. 
Kay believes that if a child can't understand his programs, then his programs are lost to everyone. The, the first major system I did was a flop, uh, although it was technically good. And uh, it really made an impression on me to have put a lot of work in to have it turn out successfully and then not have it be usable by users. And at the very same time I did that, I saw the logo work that Seymour Papert was doing at MIT, where children were learning how to program, sometimes down to the age of five or even, or even younger. And I realized, of course, I uh, should never do a system that children can't learn, because there's absolutely no conflict between power and simplicity. That's what design is all about. I just hadn't designed hard enough. What's most fascinating in all this is how fully Alan Kay resembles the computer systems he wants to create. His mind churns with a synthesis of ideas, like the layers of music he plays, beautiful and always daring to stir the imagination to future unknowns. When I think about myself, the main way I think about myself, or the main satisfaction I take with myself is that I'm still a learner. And I think of myself as a person who gets his greatest pleasure from learning. One of the ways I learn is by designing things. Because often, uh, uh, as Piaget said, the, in order to learn something, you must construct it. It's extremely difficult from the outside. And design is a way of constructing various kinds of, of realities. <laughs>